Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? So another spontaneous live stream. I know. I know. Um, I just wanted to show y'all my battle scars. Good morning, DD. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Yes, I've already it has been a beautiful morning and a beautiful day. The weather is like yesterday was gorgeous. It the it, it was partly cloudy. Um maybe like 68 degrees, something like that. Um, the sun wasn't beaming down on your face and uh, it was just gorgeous. Good. I'm glad you're great. Who else is in the house? There's three other people. <laughs> I think are two other people. Let me know who you are. So I can say what's up. Um, and it was just the cool of the day. It was just so beautiful and so perfect outside yesterday. I was like, this is what it must be like. This is what it must feel like to be in heaven because it, it, there was no humidity, no, I mean, like a little bit of sun, but not like it just wasn't beaming down. It was so nice outside. Fall weather is what I felt like. And today is a little bit warmer. Uh, but yeah, um, I have been outside and uh, got bit up by mosquitoes, y'all. And y'all see what I got on. Light colors. Uh, if y'all you, didn't check out my live stream, um, it was titled something like I have O positive, our O type O blood. And we talked about uh, how that relates to gardening. And one of the things is the mosquitoes, the pests. Hi, Green Organic Love. Good morning. And yeah, so I have battle scars. I All I wanted to do was go outside, get these seed pods. And I was like, let me go and get them off of there because I got I'm taking a little break and harvest those seeds and then i was like oh well i should show everybody um how i do that and this is my actually my first time but y'all i got eight up i mean I, I said probably five minutes all i did was go out there to clip off some okra i got one bite i don't know if y'all can see one right there they bit me like you can see that one right there but like four times or so over here I caught one on my shirt. That little, y'all see that spot? That's blood where I smacked it. Got bit on the side of my face. I mean, so the light clothes didn't work. I was like, Ugh. they just, they, again, if you have type O blood, you're more likely to get bit by mosquitoes than anybody else that has um, any other blood type other than O. So, yeah, and again, I was just running out, and I asked people to comment and tell me what they usually do to keep mosquitoes off of them, or do they prep to do that every time they go in their garden? So if y'all don't mind sharing some comments, that would be great, um, or some ideas. Hey, um, Angela, how you doing? Good to see you. Watching you from the train. Where are you going? Uh, Dee Dee says, I worked in the garden yesterday, too. The mosquitoes are always after me. Yes. O positive. I'm O positive as well. And I, man, it is something. Um, I, our O is, I'm, yeah, O positive. That's the, O positive is the one that can donate. We can donate to anybody, regardless of their blood type. Um, so we can, we can donate to anyone, but uh we can't have everybody donate to us that is that something um this is used to be my story every year i'm telling yeah these mosquitoes that's the only thing that this, i mean like really my second year in gardening i was so discouraged because i i didn't like to be out there in the space number one it didn't look the way i wanted it to look um i felt like i couldn't do anything right my second year of gardening and then on top of that the mosquitoes like it was always the anxiety about getting ate up by mosquitoes Around that time, the West Nile virus and all that stuff was really, really like, uh, you know, you were always hearing about it on the news, the radio, your friends, your family, all, you know, hearing about people dying. And then um, uh, like somebody died in where I'm from and uh, they uh, mosquitoes actually tested positive not too far from our area uh, and it was like, you know, so then your anxiety was up anyway about all that. And it kind of still is. But, you know, you just can't live life like fearing to go outside every day because of an, of an incident. You know, these active shooter incidents are another thing. Like people are just like, I don't want to go to the movies. 
I'm not trying. Now you can't even go to church. You can't even go to the church house uh, without active shooters coming in. And the grocery store is, I mean, it's ridiculous. So, but you can't, yeah. Yep. Oh, positive. It's good for everyone, DD. Yep. Yep. So I can donate to everybody, regardless of your blood type. So can DD. Uh, but everybody can't help us out, DD. And that's something. Uh, but uh, here in prior, nice to meet you. I'm one of Mr. Marshall's students. Oh, well, hello. How are you? Good to see you. So we talk about gardening on this channel and some other things, but mostly gardening. So I hope that, uh, do you garden, Kirion? Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, let me know if you garden or if you've ever grew uh, your own food before. Um, let's say it's completely covered, but still got two bites, threw my gloves on and left on, uh, <laughs> on my left hand. Let's see, I worked in the garden. I'm trying to see watching from the train. Angel says she's on Amtrak. Okay, going to back to Baltimore. Okay, okay. Uh, I, that's one thing I've never done. I've never rode the subway or a train, period. I've never flown in an airplane. Like, I'm missing out on life, ain't I? Like, I need to do that. Hey, gardening realtor. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, you got to live your best life regardless. I mean, you can't be in fear, right? You just can't do that. And I mean, you can, and it's okay. I mean, feeling, feeling anxiety, feeling fear, feeling mad, feeling happy, feeling sad, feeling grateful, you know, all those things are, we're meant to feel, uh, we are human beings and, uh, it, mammals, you know, we were designed to have emotion, but when you allow your emotion to kind of determine your behavior. You know, I was talking to my daughter about, you know, it's okay if you are upset because she'll say, I'm upset or I'm mad. And I'm like, that's fine. You can be mad, but it's what you do with your behavior, you know, after the fact, like it's, it's what you do after the fact. So if you're mad, you know, and you go around throwing stuff or hitting things or biting yourself or, you know, hurting other people, that is not okay. So being mad is okay, but not hurting others or hurting yourself, that's not okay, right? So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Zoe, hey, Zoe's in the house. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Happy Sunday to you too. Gardner really said tired, been on a deadbeat gardener. So me too. <laughs> deadbeat gardener is right, honey. Everything is kind of growing up. I've let tomatoes rot on the vine, y'all. I literally have not had time. The squash bugs, though, aren't helping that. There are still squash bugs outside everywhere. They are sucking on the tomatoes, okay? I got a little worm action as well because I've been seeing a lot of out by the arch trellis, a lot of worms, uh, holes in the tomatoes. Um, and matter of fact, I was looking at some now, the ones, the two behind the arch trellis that I let grow into bushes. Um, there are tons of tomatoes on there, and I, I, I probably should just go on and take them off. They're green still. There's a few ripe, but a few that are rotten. I've, I've been a Debbie Gardner. Yes, I have. Um, uh, and But ho hopefully I can get to those. Let's see. So I spent over three and a half hours in the garden this morning. Oh, my goodness. That is, Yeah, and it's so easy to do that. Time just flies by. It really does, but good for you because I have not been able to get in that garden at all except uh, to harvest these okra seeds today. So uh, you have to decide if you are mad or mad or mad, sad or glad, or is you glad, glad. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, you just have to make a decision. And I mean, um, you know, and then even making the decision on how you feel about certain things, you know, are you going to be mad about it? Or are you going to use this moment to, to empower yourself uh, to learn from it, to move on, you know, and all that stuff is, is easier said than done. Believe me, because my first reaction is probably not the best, you know, especially if somebody says something about my family or my husband or my child, or, you know, we always, uh, pe people I love and care about, we always get into those modes where we're like, okay, now look, uh, I can be, I can be the sweetest person, you know, but don't, don't you, don't you, you know, you know, get me confused here. Because, you know, uh, when people come against you and your family, you want to, you you just naturally, and I, I do, I just speak for me, I naturally, you know, get a little, um, you know, uh, but, but 
you know, then I have to calm down and step back and, and think about it um, a little bit. <laughs> Wildberry Cottage Home said, hey, good to see you. How you doing? Um, <laughs> Y'all agree with me? Yeah, people know how to touch up on your triggers, which makes uh, me mad. Yes, which makes you mad, mad. Yes, it does. And, you know, um, I, you know, God has really, truly worked on me, but I've worked a lot on myself. You know, he's met me halfway and, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that because just understanding, um, my truth, who I am, how I was designed to be, uh, the choices that I make clearly determine my future. Um, and, and that could be the future in the next 30 minutes, the next hour you know, 10 years from now, everything matters. And so, you know, it's just one of those things. We, we're all, I am, I'm always trying to be better, but there are times where I just, you know, I ain't having it. And that's just what it is. <laughs> it's just what it is. You can talk about me all you want, but when you mess with my children and my family or my money, there's a problem. I hear you. I hear you, gardening realtor. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Let me back it up. Let me back it up. I just want to make sure. Uh, Kirion never uh responded if he gardens or not, but it's still good to see you. I don't. I don't think you did. I might have missed you. Uh, yeah. So let me get to these uh, okra real quick. Let me show y'all these big old okra. Uh, okra is, is a hit and miss for people. People are like, ah, I love okra some. And then most people are like, mm -mm, I don't want to do with it. Um, a lot of people I hear yummy. Well, yes, I think so too. Wild berry. They are delicious. Okra, uh, people eat it a lot in the South, pickled, fried, especially. And it's usually offered on the menu as fried. So if you go to any restaurant, any Southern cooking restaurant, I mean, any restaurant that cooks a gumbo or something like that, they'll have okra too. And you can order it as an appetizer and eat it fried. And so this is what okra looks like for those of you that don't know. Um, and this is a pretty good sized okra to eat. OK, this is the green uh, Clemson spineless okra. And uh, uh, after about this size, though, it gets a little woody. And what I mean is it, it, it's a little tough to eat. Uh, raw and fried. It has it has this rubbery texture when it's fried, and so you know that you've overgrown it a little bit. You see that? Um, and so so you want to eat them quite small. Now I don't have a red okra that's this size, but the red okra tend to be a lot more skinnier. I feel, and they grow longer, and they they can get a little bit bigger about there, and they're okay still, um, fried or raw. I, I like okra. This year was my first time trying it raw and I liked it, but it was it's it's that sliminess at the end. We've talked about this before, right? And um yeah, yeah. Your neighbor likes to snack on it raw. Mm -hmm. I I really do. I appreciate it raw. Uh overgrown okra is like eating a toothpick. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And so I I can do it. I can do it. The red okra, the red burgundy okra uh, is definitely a little bit more tender. It, it, it can get a little bit longer, a little bit bigger and be pretty tender still. So that's one difference between the green one and the red one. I'm definitely going to grow both of them, but I think I will grow uh, more of the red next time because it can get a little bit bigger and you can still eat it and it'll be okay. In my opinion, that's my my experience. Um, the okra is great fried. It's great raw. It's great in soups, uh, gumbos, you know, whatever you want to do. Just chop it up um, in pieces about that big. I mean, you could do them bigger if you want. You can fry it up. It's delicious, I think. I have a lot of this in my freezer because my husband, number one, won't eat it any other way than fried. He well, I take that back. He did make a gumbo and he did put it in there. He chopped up maybe two okra and put it in the gumbo. So that surprised me though. And it was real tender and it was so it was so good. Uh, but he loved he he can definitely stomach it eating it fried though. He loves it fried. Um so harvesting seeds. 
Hold on just a second. Let me see. I'm hoping my okra will make it. I finally was able to germinate some seeds, which is a major plus. Good. Oh, I, I keep hearing that okra seeds are hard to germinate. I had no problem. Not one problem germinating okra. And I heard a couple of different ways and I was going to try this one, but I didn't. I just direct sowed and just make you have to just make sure the soil stays wet. Um, that, and that's what pretty much any seed that you germinate you, or you direct sow. Um, you just have to make sure that the soil stays. <sighs> y'all know I don't like the M word, but y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Um, not soaking wet, but pretty. Y'all know I'm talking about that M word. Hey, Miss, uh, Miss Full Roller, how you doing? Good to see you. Um. And you were fine. Somebody else recommended that you put a seed. Yes, the garden realtor. Thank you. Um, <laughs> some some other people, uh, our channel I watched. Um, oh, my gosh. What is her name? Mom. She's a mother. I know that could be everybody. Um, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue, y'all. All-purpose mom. All-purpose mom. She um, had heard this technique as well and tried it, but she put a seed in ice tray, in an ice tray, got an ice tray, put one seed in each or two seeds in each. I can't remember. Filled the ice tray up, froze the seeds, froze the seeds in the water and then planted the ice cubes. And so the goal is that it keeps the seed, um, it tricks the seed to think it went through a weather sta or stage or whatever. I forget what that process is called uh when you trick the seeds you put the seeds in the refrigerator or the freezer for a bit and then it makes it makes the seed think that it's went through the winter season what is that what is that i know i'm not making that up what is that process called y'all but um and then uh the as the ice melts of course the water is surrounding it keeps the seed uh quite the m word and so it helps with germination. But I just direct so okra. I had no damp is a good another good word. Good, Miss Angela. Thank you so much. The temperature must be pretty warm, I believe, for okra. Yes. Okra really, really, really loves and thrives in hot weather. So if all else fails, you're probably gonna have okra. Okay. If you planted it and it gets over 90 degrees, you're gonna have okra and it's they're gonna gonna do weight. Okra is pretty pest resistant. Um, the fruits are the fruit. There's not a whole lot of, if any, that I've noticed that attack the fruit of an okra plant. So the pods. OK, I don't I don't see any. Maybe at times you'll go out in the garden and you'll see ants. OK, uh, but the ants are really going after the pollen in the flower, because once I, an okra flowers, then the okra and the flower turns into the okra. Uh, somehow. OK. And I wish I, I could like actually document that. I'm sure there's a video out there, but like each stage when it the, when the okra plant blooms and then the okra forms. I think that is so cool. Um, hey, JDS. Welcome. Good to see you. Stratification. Yes. Thank you, DD. Yep. That's what I was looking for. Uh, stratification. Mm hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, and then some people say also you can soak your okra seeds for a few hours and that'll help. It's just like some some seeds have a um, outside coating or shell or I don't know how to say it, a gel or something. And it and it takes longer for those seeds to germinate than others. And so so when people say soak your seed like beans and stuff like that, soak your seeds for a few hours and then plant them, that may help with the process. Now, I've seen both sides. I've seen people say that, yes, that works. And I've seen people say, ah, why? Why are you doing that? You're just wasting time. You don't have to do that. I don't know. I've never soaked seeds. Um, maybe one time, one time I soaked some peas, I think it was, and then plant it. But I didn't see any difference in the time frame of them sprouting. Everything sprouted at the same time. So, you know, it's up to you. I think try it all and see what works for you is my best advice. Um, Wildberry Cottage Home says that says take some sandpaper to the seeds. Hmm, never heard that one. 
But again, I mean, try it. Try it and see, y'all, uh, what works for you. You also said, while Barry, that you roast with olive oil and parmesan. Ooh, and uh, then you eat them fried, of course. <laughs> yeah. I've never tried roasted okra. Hmm. Yeah, and, and other than like soups or gumbos, there's not a whole lot of other dishes that I've seen with okra. You know, okra is like one of those things that people just, you eat it this way or you don't eat it that way at all, I guess. I don't know. I've never seen an okra and chicken dish or an okra and, you know, I don't know. Y'all know what I'm saying? I've never really seen recipes, a lot of recipes with okra. Uh, other than soups and fried, of course. Um, so, yeah. So, nice, pretty little okra that I harvested. Um, there are a ton out there. Actually, the plants are starting to topple over because I have not been able to harvest okra. So, everything is getting, it's getting top heavy. And they're so tall. They're like way above my head, probably going on seven feet tall. Um, and they're starting to topple over because I haven't been harvesting. So all of the pods are getting big. I'm going to have plenty of seeds. I'm thinking about opening a seed shop. I don't know what that's like for real. I've never done that. Uh, but I am going to have several okra seeds. I might just put it out there, you know, once I harvest to see what I have. Um, you know, um, probably 99 cents. Um, I don't know about shipping. I've never shipped stuff before or seeds before. So I don't know nothing about that. I'm just thinking this stuff out loud. But let me show you. I have the red burgundy okra and I have the green Clemson spineless okra. One second, y'all. Mm. Appreciate you. Um, let's see. So this is what the seed pod looks like. Um, it is dried, and if you shake it, you'll hear the seeds inside. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Ooh, that one's better. Y'all hear that? Okay, and let me tell you the difference, because these are both green okra seed pods. Look how big they got. Y'all see that? that? This one, hmm, I might have... I, might have could have left this one on the vine a little bit longer. It looks like it's ready. It's brown. I don't know if y'all can tell that, but it is a brown, like brown and white now instead of all green. Um, this one's definitely more dry than this one. I see. I mean, the colors are still green, but this is a little bit more green here. This was like a green brown or almost all brown. So maybe I could have left that one on the seat on the plant a little bit longer. Sounds like a maraca or something. Y'all hear that? So yeah, you can hear them. Um, mm, this one's bigger, but I can't hear it as much. So again, it's a little bit more green than the other. So maybe I, I should have left them on the, actually, look at this. Green one. This is a red one. And so I can tell the difference because you cut them off just like you do when you harvest okra. And it's actually harder to cut these off because they've gotten a little bigger. But, y'all, this is a red one and this is a green one. Yeah. So, the you can see the reds are more long. Y'all see how long that is? <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. And I can also tell the difference, too, because the top of it is a little bit is, is red and this one is green. Do you all see that? The green is a whole lot more thicker than the red as well. So as you're harvesting seeds, just to make sure you don't, it does look like a sword. Hi-ya! 
Okay. If I had a little bit girl farmer in here, she, that's what she would be doing. So I have four reds so far. So look at those. Isn't that something? Wait a minute. So I have all of, whoop, whoop, dropping them. Yeah. Yeah. One second, y'all. Okay. So I have all of these to harvest seeds from. Yay! So I wanted to do this live because I want I want y'all to see how many seeds come out of a pod because I've never seen it either. So I got my handy dandy star foam paper plate. Um. Uh, the spook who sat the sat by the door. Um, welcome. Quite a name. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, set it over there. Uh, yeah, the hubby then. Oh, I definitely gonna cut this short now. He didn't buy food in here. We just now getting home from the church house. We went to the grocery store and he he uh, then cooked up some uh homemade French fries. Stuff we ain't gonna be eating, but it was quick. And some Coney Coney dogs. I didn't call them Coney dogs growing up. That's what his family calls them. I call them chili dogs. I don't know, but the spook who sat by the door. I bet you love when people say your whole name because it's cracking me up right now. But um, the spook who sat by the door. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Yes, I'm I'm growing. Yeah, DD just okay. Um, oh, it's a book. Okay, cool. Uh, did you plant two different varieties in the same location? If so, the seed will most likely be cross pollinated. They were in the same location, and they were not cross pollinated. I, I I don't see any evidence of that. And I'm new to that concept, but I do understand it. Um, uh, I but I know I I haven't seen any. Um. Any, uh, you're talking about the seeds, the seeds may come out weird. You may be true. Yep. Yep. You may be right. Yep. So I'm just going to crack these open and let y'all see. Matter of fact, I can see them even uh, through the little cracks there. I don't know if y'all can see that little crack. Y'all see a little crack? Yeah. I can see the seed pod, the seeds there. So let's, let's look, let's look into it and see what I'm just going to, I probably, this is probably isn't the best way to do it, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to crack them open like this. Um, oh yeah, it's really, it's really simple. I just hope they don't go everywhere. So I'm gonna angle the camera down just a bit so y'all can see. And so I can make sure the little paper plate catches the seeds. Okay. And let's see if I can, without my computer going off. Um, okay. This might not be a good idea, but let's try. Mm. Okay, y'all see that? I'm just slowly trying to crack them open here. And this, these are the red. I'm just pulling it open. Ooh. Oh, there they go. Oh. Okay, a little bit of muscle. There's the seeds. And they're just kind of falling out. Now, there, there are layers. I can already see that. So, I think, the, I think there's another layer under here. Yep. So, I just pulled off one side. Y'all see that? Let me, let me make sure these are all out. There's, there's a couple of layers. So don't just harvest the first layer and think you're done. There's a layer in front of this one. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a do it this way. Long. Oh, look at that. Woohoo! Try not to. It's a little tedious doing it on camera here. OK, 
Okay, so that was the layer. And I think that's it. Let me double check. Yeah, I don't think I see any more. I just want to double check here. Nope. Okay. I don't think I see any more. So, yeah. Look how many seeds. Just, and this is just one side of the okra pod. I haven't even, this, this is the rest of it. So, look how many seeds. And it's, I, I'm just, I'm believing that more and more every day that the more, the more you plant, uh, like, or the, the what, what do people say? The more, or if you plant, if you plant a, if you plant a plant, you will never buy seeds again. Okay. And if you, if you just allow the, the process to happen and it doesn't look cute. Sometimes the, the seed, you know, plants going to seed, it takes a while. And you be, you may be like, oh, mm, I don't like the way that looks. And I just want my garden clean and neat and nice. Well, it, it's true because I felt the same way. But like if you just let the plants do what they do naturally, you'll never have to. I will not buy okra seeds ever again. There's one okra that somebody told me about. And I can't even remember the name. Emerald? No. Was it emerald okra? I can't remember somebody told me, and it probably is close, if not the same as Clemson, uh, the the one I have now. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, they're just falling out, guys. Oh my gosh, there's just you. It's like you tear off one layer, they fall out, and then there's another one. You have to make sure you get that other layer. Yeah, wait a minute. There might not be one in here. No, but it's okay to to break and see, but there's not one in there. Um, but it's pretty simple to harvest okra seeds. But it, again, it may not look cute on the vine, but if you just let the process happen, you'll have seeds forever, and you'll have a lot of seeds. You'll never have to buy these again for what, unless you don't store them well. You know, and you might have an accident. Um, and then people are like, well, how do you store seeds? How should you do that? Anybody have any? Hey, backyard gardener. Welcome. Anybody? Hey, Mikey, how you doing? Anybody have any ideas on how to store seeds? Um, I have been putting all of mine in like a paper or something like an envelope or envelope, however you say it. And, uh, um, it's in a basket right now in a cool place. Um, yeah. <laughs> okra pod i'm just cut splitting it in half so out of one okra y'all look at this all those seeds out of one okra pod so do you know there's at least 25 30 seeds there yep all that out of one pod and i have all of these to go <laughs> okay and that's just what I have now that's ready. So I have tons more out there on the vine. And this is the red okra. And matter of fact, I'm going to take my trusty pen and write red burgundy okra on the plate. So when I go to harvest later, I know. I remember. Yep. That's it. That's how you all harvest the seeds. Um, let me get back in the chat and see what y'all talking about. Um... Oh, don't tell me that, Dee Dee. Squash bugs were hide in the okra. You got to be kidding. You kidding me. I ain't never seen that. I hope not. Mmm. They just be, oh my God. I hate a squash bug. I can't stand a squash bug. I swear. <sighs> Let's see what else y'all talking about. <laughs> Miss Full Roller said, oh, a secret compartment. Yeah. Yep. 
okra is one of the easiest vegetables to grow. Uh, the spook you set, who set by the door. <laughs> I got to check that book out now. I got to check it out. Um, each pot can hold 80 to 100 seeds. Wow. Well, I don't think, I don't know. You know, sometimes you're eyeballing. I don't see, I don't think there's 80 seeds there, but you could be right. And I'm going to check and double check and make sure I got all of them out before I throw them away. Um, but yes, yeah, some seed pods can like, uh, um, uh, oh, what is that? Um, not cilantro, but yes, yeah, cilantro can too. Lettuce, any lettuces. I, sh I showed y'all the video. I, I did a video on harvesting, um, pak choy seeds. Oh my God. And, uh, those seed pods, I mean, there were tons and tons. I mean, any lettuce seed or brassica uh, plant that you allow to go to seed, you're going to have thousands of seeds from that one plant. I mean, just so many seeds. You'll never have to buy them again, ever. <laughs> this is the real meaning of being fruitful and multiply. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Oh, I just received my seeds in the mail from Seed Snow. I'm about to go and plant all my beans and peas. Yay, Zoe. I have so much fun doing that. Oh, I went out. I did. When I was out there, I checked on the peas, the sugar snap peas and the little marble peas. They are all coming up. They're all sprouting fine. I gave them a little bit of water. I shouldn't have done that. It's midday, but they're still in the shade. So I figured I'd water them while I was out there real fast. And, um, but they look like they are doing really well. Envelopes work well. So we're talking about storing seeds. Yes, I, I do use those. Uh, plastic bags are okay. Um, a lot of people like plastic bags or plastic containers because if water gets on them, then the seeds won't get wet. I get that. But you need to make sure that your seeds are dry really well before you put them in the plastic bag because if you don't, they will sprout. And uh, make sure they're they're you know put up somewhere that is cool and dry as well. Um, I'm trying something new and putting my unused seeds in my seed aspirin bottles. Yes, repurposing. I love to repurpose almost everything. So uh, peel bottles, great idea. I love that. Again, just make sure your seeds are dry. And when you're saving seeds, like. I won't store these right away in the envelopes. I give them like uh, at least a week or so to dry. So I'll leave them on the paper plate for about seven days. Sometimes, I mean, four to seven days and just let them make sure all the moisture is out of them before I actually store them too, y'all. So I won't, I won't put them directly into an envelope. Some people may, but I don't. I just want to make sure they're all the way dry before I store them. Um, I'm trying to, um, let's see, Circa, that's a good idea. Okay, sucker, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, uh, Miss Fuller. Okay. Um, Y'all talking about <laughs> the spook who sat by the door. Okay. How long do okra seeds last? Good question. Have no idea. Um, most seeds, though, like people, people, you know, go through this, like, uh, to keep my seeds fresh, I'm going to put them in the refrigerator kind of thing. I'm not doing that. I've got a family and my refrigerator is full of food most of the time. Thank God. Uh, sometimes it isn't, but most of the time it is. <laughs> and um, I, I need my room in the refrigerator for my food. I, I That's what is supposed to be in my fridge. The only time I ever put anything related to gardening in my fridge and it, and it grossed me out were the ladybugs before we released them. Um, I don't, I don't really like to put stuff in there that doesn't necessarily typically go in the refrigerator. I don't have another fridge, you know, or anything like that. So I, I did that for the ladybugs cause they needed to go in there, but you know, I'm not going to put my, uh, people say, put them in the refrigerator. I'm not going to do that. Uh, personally, I don't, um, most seeds though, even I, I like there is a chart that I have, um, I have a Facebook group, by the way, called Bear Fruit Gardening. It, it it started as a private group because I, and it still is a private group. I have not made it public because I was just talking to people. It, it was even before I started the YouTube channel. I have this group and uh, we were just talking amongst each other. I was just sharing a lot of information 
um, that I had learned and I would post it there. I post pictures of gardening updates of things that are going in my garden, but mostly just information. So people could garden, beginner gardeners uh, would have like references instead of Googling everything. They could just look in the group because I always had something posting. Um, I haven't posted uh, uh, like quite as much lately in that group. But if y'all if y'all ask to join the group, I will I will add you to the group. Um, it's just Barefoot Gardening on Bear on uh, Facebook. Um, but I was getting to what was we talking about? Oh, seed saving. There's a chart that's on there that tells you how long you can store seeds for, and they'll be good depending on their like their mortality, depending on um, not mortality. They don't have a life, but like, what am I trying to say? What's the word? Um, their vitality. Is that right? Anyway, um, val what is that word? That's going to bug me now. Somebody help me out. The seeds vitality, not vitality. Are the seeds, you can tell which ones are viable. Okay. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. So, um, I, yeah, and it tells you like how many years I've had viability. Thank you. Viable viability. Yes. Thank you so much, DD. Um, but you, um, I've had seeds. I have seeds that are three years old and I can't remember. I think they are tomato seeds and they sprouted just fine. I have seeds that are. Let's see, I had tomatoes, I had beans, I had, what else did I have? Peppers that were three years old, and they're still viable. Um, and if you're not sure which seeds are viable, you can always, when you get ready to plant, just um, fill like a little cup up with water, just some plastic cup you was going to throw away anyway, or something, a glass. Fill it up with some water. Drop the seeds in. If they float, then they're more likely not viable. If they sink to the bottom, then they're viable. They'll be fine. Just a quick test that you could do. I do that all the time. Um, yes, viability. Yes. And so, yeah. Yeah. Okra. That's that. So I hope you are having a terrific day. Thank you all for joining me. I know this is spontaneous again, uh, but thank you all so much. Um, and uh, welcome to Jeanette, Miss Jeanette Davis. I only keep my tomatoes and pepper seeds in the fridge. Okay, so she she keeps her tomatoes and pepper pepper seeds in the fridge. Okay, welcome to the live. By the way, I did not. I don't think I've ever. Have we met? Have we met? I don't think we've met. So welcome, welcome. Um, and let's see, Miss Melanie. Hey, I didn't say hi to you on thing. How you doing, girl? You doing all right? It's good to see you. Um, let's see. And no, we haven't met. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We we're just talking about how to harvest okra seeds. And I did that live. I don't know how long you've been here, but um, I have quite a bit of seed pods. And have you ever grown okra before, uh, Miss Jeanette? All the way from California. That is so cool. So I have some okra here. I had red burgundy okra. And this is the red here. These two are red. And the rest of them are green. And uh, two types of okra. And if you, and I just uh, went ahead and clipped them off of the vine today so I can harvest those seeds. My first time harvesting the seeds, but I knew how to do it. Uh, my first time growing okra this year. I ate okra raw for the first time. I've always had it fried growing up, um, but I ate it raw for the first time this year. I have a taste test um, playlist, so if you want to hit that up on my channel, you can check it out. I did taste okra. There was an okra challenge issued by a beautiful Nest TV as well. And so I, I did tag her in that, uh, but she uh, wanted everybody to try it. Uh, her sons had tried it raw and they didn't like it very much. It It, it is the sliminess at the end, but overall, okra tastes amazing to me. I really like the taste. Um, 
it's just one of those veggies that people don't eat often or don't like at all, but it is the most heat resistant. I do believe out of all vegetables, okra thrives in the heat and, and the most pest resistant as far as pest attacking the actual fruit. Now, June bugs or Japanese beetles, um, they love okra leaves. So when they hit, when they come out, they, they on everything, beans, okra, you know, they pretty much, dev your, your fruit trees, they devastate. They can really devastate your, your plants, uh, the Japanese beetles. But other than that, I don't find, I, in my experience this year, for the first time ever growing okra in my own garden, I did not see any pests actually attack the fruit and like bore or you know into the fruit or whatever so okra is pretty dope if you can if if it, it's a survival food i think uh definitely definitely so thank you all again for joining me thank yes have a great week zoe everybody else have a great rest of your week it's been a pleasure and i'll holler at y'all later y'all know i will because that's what i do love y'all